Okay, we'll move on to item two, the administrative actions. Uh, 2A is approval of the seven county IGA. The seven counties are Coos, Curry, Douglas, Jackson, Josephine, Klamath, and Lane counties. And we have with us today uh, Connie Roach, our Josephine County Assessor. Ms. Roach. Good morning, Commissioners. Um, I'm just going to kind of recap a little bit this morning. Um, proposed IGA is a one-year pilot pro project for seven of Southern Oregon's counties, assessor's offices. If the IGA is approved, Lane County would take the lead in developing a list of businesses from publicly available resources who may not be filing a return in Josephine County under existing law. The goal is to seek voluntary compliance by sending a reminder letter to non-filers who may not be aware of the requirements under existing law. We are not adding anything to existing law. There are no new regulations. Rather, we're simply informing businesses of their responsibilities under existing law. Lane, Coos, Curry, and Klamath County commissioners have signed the IGA already. Jackson County is expected to sign within the next two weeks, and Douglas County is delayed due to the election of a new assessor who needs to be updated on the project. As I have previously stated, I do not believe this will generate much, if any, revenue for Josephine County. Sixty percent of the active businesses that we know of are below the taxable threshold and pay no property tax on their business assets. As has been discussed already, we're merely asking businesses to obey existing law. When business owners fulfill their responsibilities under state law, it creates a fair and level playing field for all business, local business owners. It is not fair to those who comply when their competitor does not. Again, I would remind you that this is simply a one-year pilot program at the end of, of which we will know whether it was even worth the effort. By approving the IGA, Josephine County would benefit from the additional staff and resources made available through the grant at no cost, bringing fair and equitable treatment to all local businesses. Any questions? The cost to Josephine County, I understand, is zero. zero. I think it's just important that this is one element um, of a portfolio of options that were available to Josephine County through <coughs> this uh, grant, and this is the one that we probably are understaffed in in our assessor's exactly. office. So we're, we're actually saving money by, by acquiring this grant and being able to provide this service. Um, the fairness element is a huge deal to me. There are businesses out there that are right next door to businesses that are not filing or maybe maybe don't understand that they need to, and um, that's that's not necessarily fair. People who don't like the law of assessment, that's fine. You need to change that, and until we're all we're all operating under the same law, so that's the element of fairness. It's not punitive necessarily because you said that 60% of existing filing businesses don't meet that threshold, and likely if you're small enough to probably not be you know familiar with this law you're probably that percentage could be a lot higher we also don't know how many businesses are not not doing this not in compliance there could be there could be five there could be 500 exactly. I don't think we know we don't until we do the exercise we don't know and that's one of the things that we would find out by this um, if we and we will be tracking um, we will indicate, you know, we will have a way of tracking which businesses were found through this process so that at the end of the day we'll know whether um, it was of any benefit at all. Um, but you're right, we might find that we've been really good at, at discovering businesses and there may not be many that we don't know about. On the other hand, there could be a lot that we don't know about. That's what the pilot is there to tell us. Any other questions? Yeah, I do. Uh -huh. um, one, I'm, I'm still not convinced of what is the need of this, to have the governmental initiation of finding these answers uh, as far as trying to resolve these, these questions locally. I mean, if I'm in business and I'm paying a business tax and the guy next door I know is not, that's a simple solution. I mean, I just report that and there's some follow through on that. Uh, we have one staff person that deals with business personal property. A lot of her time is taken up with processing the returns of those who do comply. 
she doesn't have a lot of extra time to go seeking other businesses and the discovery, but we do as much as we can. We look at the um, state business um, when they register a business name with the state. We look at permitted for city businesses that have to get permits. Um, you know, sometimes they report in the newspaper or they'll have an ad or something that we see. There are a lot of avenues that we are already doing that, but we are just short-staffed to be able to do it to the best of our ability. And like I, like I said, and Commissioner Simon pointed out, we don't know that we're missing a lot. Maybe we're not. Maybe we're doing sufficient with the person we have, but that would tell us whether that's true or not. The other one is the there's always the question of the long-term use of the information gathered. Um, and I, I always have a, a hesitancy of, you know, the, the caricatures, you know, trust me. Um, and, and I don't know what's going to be used, where that information goes to. I realize that you have the, the sensitivity of you can't give this information out, et cetera, et cetera. But that does not mean that there cannot be some governmental looking at it or assessing it in some, in some way that the, the value. The, the information is confidential that we receive. Those um, returns are kept in locked files. They are shredded when they are past the time when we are required by law to, to retain them. So they don't stay out there forever. We enter some basics into a computer system, but not even all of our staff can access that. Only those who have a, a, a responsibility to monitor that program have access to that information. So most of even my staff is locked out from seeing that. We cannot share it with another government uh, entity. We can, the only thing, in, and they actually had to change the law so that if someone filed a return in our county that belonged in another county, we couldn't give it to the other county. And so they finally did something so that we would be allowed to pass that on to the correct county. I mean, the, and they have confidentially agreements that, you know, the staff who does have access to it, um, if they violate that, they would be subject to termination possibly. Um, if they violate it and abuse that. Um, the other part of it is, is um, you know, you have a small business and you have a business owner who signs that and his wife comes in and wants to see that. She doesn't have access to it. We cannot disclose it to the public. If the person himself comes in and wants to look at what, the, what did I file last year, we want identification before we will know that they are allowed to see it. We're very sensitive to that, and we do not want that going out. So what, what is the time frame from getting the information and then keeping it for how long before it is destroyed? Um, it's either 6 or 12 years. Most of our assessment records are required to be kept for either 6 or 12, and I can't remember which it is on that off the top of my head, but generally probably 12 would be the outside. And then the long-term use of the information? Is there, is there going to be some comparison between, he, he reported, he did not report a business in 2014. Uh, and in 2016, he's been doing business for six, six years or whatever. It, there's a, so there's a long-term use for this information as well? Well. Comparison-wise? and. I, mainly what we're doing is each year we look at the assets to see if they are above or below the threshold for being taxed for that year. If they report proper, you know, there's, there's assets that businesses have that they purchased in 1989. They're still on the roll, but they're totally, you know, they're depreciated down to their lowest level. Um, every year, I mean, assets are, re, are stay on the roll until they report that they have discarded, um, those assets. Um, so, you know, once they tell us an asset has been acquired, it stays on the assessment roll until they discard it. So that's the only, you know, and, and generally most businesses will annually have something that they're adding, something that they're taking off. Um, so if, the, if there is no anticipated increase in funding, why bother? 
Well, because it's state law. So I mean, if it was my if it was my preference, I would do away with business personal property altogether. I don't think it serves the Josephine County very well. I'm sure it costs us more to administer the program than we get in revenue. And you know, there are other counties that. You know, if you look at Multnomah, I'm sure that they probably collect a lot in business personal property tax. We don't. We are a small community with a lot of small businesses. We have very few large businesses that pay business personal property. So what the... <coughs> I, I'm, still, I'm still hung up on why, why start this or why bother with this if there is no anticipated revenue to be received. Okay. Well, I think part of the part of the thing was is there was I'd back up on the history of it a little bit is that there was a government governor's task force that wanted people to look at ways that they could do some cooperative efforts that would potentially save the taxpayers monies by efficiencies. This is a pilot program. It's a test to see if doing something like this could save the county's money. That is part of it. And so it is just a test program. We don't know the result. We may get to the end of it and say it wasn't worth it, but we don't know unless we try it. One thing that um, we discussed the other day when we had our meeting, and, and I'd like to clarify it here for the public as well, is not only does it not cost Josephine County any money, uh, but what it will do also is the the limitation on the property, the business property that is actually subject to taxation, which, as you say, in Josephine County, isn't the majority. Um, it is does not include inventory, and it does not include. It is not uh, applicable to income taxes. So it's only Correct. your business. It's equipment the business. such as computers or desks or whatever. So right. if you have a, a small business that you have a, a little office, maybe even operate right. out of your home, who knows. But And you see a lot of the little business downtown. We have a lot of retail stores downtown. They may have a few shelves and a cash register, things like that. They don't add up to the threshold. So they're not being taxed on that. You know, you have somebody like Walmart, yeah they're going to have sufficient. They're going to have enough racks that, you know. So it, it really, um, and, and that threshold is doing something at the same time. It, it is indexed to um, the cost of living. So it will go up. It started out at $10,000 when it was initially started, that threshold. And it has gradually gone up to 16000 um, and so every year we re they revisit that and tell us, um, you know, the state does tell us where to increase that threshold to. So over time that gradually increases. At the same time, if you have someone who, say, bought their business and they started business in maybe 2000, they bought a lot of equipment in 2000, so it was brand new. Well, over time that's been depreciating down, so maybe Back in 2000, they were above the threshold, but gradually they depreciated down to below the threshold. So, you know, it, those two elements are, you know, crossing each other at some point in most small businesses' lives. Okay. Madam Chair, yes. I have a couple of things. Um, people don't generally like tax and assessment, so it's pretty easy to kind of poke at what you do on a daily basis. and. Uh, there's probably a hundred things that in your office that are required either by state law or part of your job through tax and assessment that people, if we brought to light the element, they would be really opposed to it. Um, it's kind of ironic that we get to this point. There are a little under 3,300 compliant businesses who have already taken it. They've filed. They've done the appropriate paperwork. What we're looking into those people who either don't know or are trying to avoid this thing. Okay. And in that situation, those people who are trying to avoid it, this is a note in your mailbox that says, hey, did you know, and, and maybe you should do this, um, those people are going to continue to do what they've done in the past, and they won't be, they won't be penalized through this program. Um, but those who didn't know are going to come into compliance, and what they're going to avoid is the, the, the law that's punitive that goes back a couple of years and says, you know, you just filed it now, but you've been in operation since yeah. XYZ and you purchased those pieces of equipment five years ago, and 
you you are responsible for those back taxes like everybody else in this county or the state is responsible for those things so um, we, we could talk all day about mm -hmm. the finite philosophies behind tax and assessment what you do um, but really this is a compliance education element that I think we need to go forward with um, and, and it makes it fair and an even playing field. If we want to talk about business, business needs to be able to compete with the neighbor who is compliant with the law. And, and that's where I come down on this thing. Well, we, all, we all swore an oath, everybody did, to um, uh, hold the state and federal laws, constitution, and, and the laws thereof. And, and this is just one more of those. If you really want to talk about something, you know, people will come up and say, well, I don't think you should do this. We shouldn't go forward. You, you don't. You're, you're arguing the wrong thing. You want to argue something? It's the construction excise tax. Let's go there at a dollar a square foot for residential construction in Josephine County, 50 cents per square foot for commercial. That's something this board needs to work on. What you're doing is it's an IGA. It's something that's provided for by the state under state law, and we don't have discretion over. The construction excise tax is something we do have construction, uh, we have discretion over, and that's something we need to talk about. Um, what you're proposing here today, uh, we're spending more time than we should and not focusing on the things we should, in my opinion. Commissioner Hick? Yes, but we gave you an opportunity to promote your position on the construction. I don't need an opportunity. Every meeting I have an opportunity. <laughs> I know. If I vote no on this, am I violating a law? No. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. You're just... Um, denying me a tool. Right. Any further questions? No. Thank you, Ms. Roach. Appreciate it. Good morning, Robert Kendall, Grants Pass. I have a couple of comments first, and then I want to ask some questions and make some suggestions. Um, first off, in the uh, article in the Courier last night, there's your reference, as you have already gone through today, for the intergovernmental agreement uh, that uh, you want to put uh, people on notice uh, to check on their personal uh, business assets. Well, in the first place, if it's a personal asset, it's not a business asset. I don't understand how government mixes the two. But apparently there's some law that says one is like the other. Now, Cheryl Walker, in her voters' pamphlet, uh, when she before she got elected, she made some comments in there as to her plan. One was to remove barriers in planning, zoning, and permitting, allowing businesses to grow. She also said she had wants to privatize services that can be best provided by private business or nonprofits. So now we're asking businesses to bend over backwards to do more forms, more cost, uh, more things that takes from their bottom line. Now most of the, pro the, the, the equipment that they buy, they have to take out of their profits. And if they take it out of their profit, that means they have less in their pocket. So when you and the government comes along and says, I want to check your assets, and then turn around and provide a cost a fee to them to pay, that's taken out of their bottom line. That's not American. So I would suggest, and I agree with Ms. Roach, that this whole process of so-called assessment of personal property uh, for business purposes is an oxymoron, number one. But I agree with her that this is probably not going anywhere and it's meaningless dribble. It's not going to improve the bottom line for the county and that those resources that she has could be better used in other ways. Thank you. I'd like to clarify in case there's some misunderstanding. This is state law. It's not anything the county has uh, passed or voted on. So it is state law. So you know, to take the issue to your legislative uh, representative, which, well, Mr. Hicks won't be there, but um, I'm presuming you're probably in the, in the district that would be uh, the next person who wins in, in this election. So but, but the next session is January, 
So yes. that, that's where it would need to be started. Thank you. I, I agree with you. However, I do also know that you folks are going to take a vote here pretty quick on this issue. And I would hope that you would vote no. I agree with Mr. Heck that I don't think that there's really a benefit. A cost benefit is not there. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Mr. Jones? Mike Jones, Grants Pass. Um, I, too, have uh, issues with the intergovernmental agreement. Um, uh, the obvious goal of this pilot program is to set up enforcement. Um, and that can start out very, um, uh, you know, simply uh, with a postcard. But it ends up with them wanting to come to your uh, place of business and make the assessment themselves. Um, now, I came here from California. So to give you an idea of where this kind of thing can go, um, I pulled a building permit in San Francisco one year. I was a building contractor in, in Northern California, had a job that I did down there and, and uh, needed a permit. So um, I went down there, did the job. It was a very small job. To this day, I still get notifications from the city of San Francisco um, saying that I owe taxes even for the last year of doing business. The state of California, this speaks to the sharing of information. Uh, the state of California sends me tax bills saying I owe them $12,500. That's a you know, a number they're pulling out of who knows where. Um, and, and the purpose of that is to intimidate me into, of course, sending them some money or something or filing a return with them. I haven't lived in California. I haven't done business there in over 10 years. So that's sort of where you can go with this. Now, pilot programs. This, uh, um, we're having a pilot program. Just uh, saw it on the news this morning where they're um, going to attempt to tax people by the mile instead of uh, using the gas tax because the gas tax is not generating enough revenue. Um, that's insane. But that's coming to you uh, uh, as a pilot program, just like this other pilot program. Now, uh, one other topic. Um, I was wondering, because it's not on the agenda any longer, the uh, meeting that was supposed to take place in Central Point with all three of you guys, what happened to that? Is that still happening on Friday? Or? No, it was canceled. <clears throat> Is Kirkpatrick? Pilcher. Kirkpatrick Pilcher. Thanks, sorry. Good morning, Vivian Kirkpatrick Pilcher, and I live in Grants Pass. First, I'd like to say kudos to the sheriff for, um, what's that saying, trying to do, uh, he's so good at what he does, he can do almost anything with nothing, and that's about what he's doing. So I'm glad he's getting a little extra help there. Um, I thought Josephine County was broke. Must be doing pretty well. I've seen you increase positions in the commissioner's office, adding to the assessor's office, adding other positions that I can't currently recall. But now you're adding four new positions, and these are not refilling anyone who has quit. So the requisition says, anyway, these new four positions, in a, the road workers, will cost $112,000 a year, and we haven't talked benefits yet for those four positions. Now Rob Brand just got up and said, oh, we're backfilling these positions. Well, that's not what the job requisition said in the package that came to you guys. It said new positions. So that's my first gripe. Second gripe, the IGA. I read it. I have read the a portion of a book written by Mark Levin last year that cites the layers and layers of government that are foisted upon American citizens and just how detrimental it is to your freedoms. IGA that is foisted upon us with ORS 308.290 returns 2013 Oregon revised statutes, in turn cites other ORSs to, to force compliance. This has to do with the business personal property tax that we're all talking about. Um, the IGA will do the following. Connie says it's going to inform them. When I read it, it says it's going to inform them. Then they're going to get a physical visit to audit a completed personal property return check. It says it in this document. Um, do you need a warrant to go on somebody's personal property if they have their business at home? I don't know. Um, then it talks about enforcement. 
And there's a little, little thing in there that says, oh, they'll get amnesty for interest only. Interest only, not amnesty for past dues. They also have listed in there a custodial supervisor that, and a custodial staff for, for what the costs of this program are going to be. And these people make between $31 and $47 an hour, so we're not talking a guy pushing a broom here. Uh, custodial staff, $26 to $39 an hour. Again, not a guy pushing a broom. So if we have custodial people, does that mean that they are going to be confiscating things? Because this thing refers to a whole lot of ORS other statues. I didn't have time to read all of them. And so why are they putting that in there? And in addition, it also has fines up to $5,000. Did you read that in there? Apparently somebody didn't. Then it says in this ORS that you get a lien on your property if you don't pay up. So, I, I guess with all that new income, well, you're not going to need a levy. Um, let's see. <laughs> oh, my three minutes are up. I got so much more to say. I am so sorry. I just, just so much more to say. Anyone else wish to speak? Sandy Casanelli. Sandy Casanelli, Merlin, Oregon. You know, um, the documentation that was provided out in the lobby by um, Bad County says that this is not just a one-year pilot program. It says that Lane County has an obligation to uh, plan, develop, and conduct a three-phase pilot business personal property tax compliance program. Phase one goes with the education, identifying businesses that are not filing compliant. Phase two um, says that we, their goal is to um, design and implement a field review program where selected individual businesses not in compliances will be contacted in person. And phase three is, uh, involves a physical visit to check the accuracy of the return of, of businesses. This is not good for business in Josephine County. It says that we've heard from the assessor that, you know, it's only going to be the big, bigger businesses in town. It's not going to be all the little ones. Well, if it's only the big businesses, we don't have that many in Josephine County. And one person working in the assessor's office should adequately be able to manage that small number of, of businesses. They also said that... Um, uh, regarding the fees uh, that our, the assessor's office wanted to implement, the new fees, that they wanted to have it, the county f collect it separately because if they went through planning, it would be subject to LUBA, LUBA rules. Now, you know, we have an assessor's who, office who is now um, working against the citizens of Josephine County. But the other um, increases in, in fees, some are double or triple what they were before. Some are new, which is against our county charter also. Um, uh, that's going to be implemented without a vote of the people. This is really a bad thing for Josephine County. If you want to increase the economic activity of your your county you decrease the tax burden what this does is it increases it so it's going to make less and less activity in, in our county also uh, regarding the seven county um, iga it says we've heard that the cost does not cost josephine county anything that's a bunch of baloney these are state funds that are going to do this, and the citizens of Josephine County have paid their state monies. Thank you.